In this video, we're gonna talk about what exactly threat hunting is. Hi everybody, welcome to Studio Sec. Thank you for watching. Like if this video is helpful, comment down below with your thoughts on threat hunting, if this is a career path maybe you wanna get into, uh, and, and subscribe for more content. We're posting content every week. Threat hunting, that sounds pretty cool, right? But do we really know what that is in the context of cybersecurity? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. And truth be told, it sounds cool because it is. You see, threat hunting is whenever a cybersecurity professional puts on camouflage and face paint, and then they go out into the woods, and then they wait for a threat to hunt. It's just like normal hunting, except the threats hunt back. Not really but sorta, kind of, not really, like in an analogous kind of way, but we'll really talk about what it is. Threat hunting is the basically hunting for indicators of compromise within your organization. Now, as you can imagine already, uh, this is a huge and important task. Now, if you've already seen the cybersecurity tools video that I posted, then you know that intrusion detection systems are available for an organization to find indicators of compromise. So then why do you need a human being to do this job? Well, truth be told, no technology is perfect. You'll always end up with false positives or false negatives. Uh, and, and both of those, and let's break down what a false positive is. A, a false positive is something that is shown to be true when in fact it is false. Uh, so think of like, you know, someone logging in uh, that is authorized, like a, a normal everyday employee logging into their account, and then that login session being flagged as suspicious. That would be false positive because you know that they're, uh, they're, they have permission to log into their account. They log in all the time. They're a regular employee. They're not accessing really anything. They're just logging in for work. That is a false positive. A false negative is, let's say, you know, same example, uh, that person logs into their account but let's say it's like months or years after that person has left the organization, right? So uh, a false negative is saying that that's not really suspicious, but if they're not a part of your company anymore, that truly is pretty suspicious, right? Any kind of automated system, like an intrusion detection system that might do these checks on its own, uh, it will need a human pair of eyes to verify whether uh, its assessment of this being suspicious and this thing not being suspicious if those assessments are true. Now, of course, uh, if you've seen the technologies video, then you know that AI is gonna be able to help in this area. And that's true, AI will be able to help in this area, but you'll never really be able to mimic uh, a human uh, understanding of, of <laughs> ultimately human behavior. You know, uh, the attacker on the other side, they are still a human being. You know, and so you're, it, it takes a human to be a human in, the, in this chess game, right? So um, you, that's where threat hunting comes in. It's kind of, it's, there's a little bit of the technical aspect, but there's definitely some of the psychological aspect of thinking, you know, if I'm going to attack this system, what would that attack look like? And can I find in indicators of that kind of an attack right now in the network? Another reason is attackers are getting better and better at being able to avoid detection. Uh, they can avoid an IDS, they can, you know, avoid firewall flags. And, and that's, again, that's kind of why you need to have, um, you know, a, a pair of human eyes that can monitor some of this traffic and can identify, okay, well, this clearly is not an automated process. It's not part of how our app is supposed to work. So maybe there's some foul play. So specifically, what kind of things are, are, are threat hunters looking for on a daily basis? Well, let's, uh, you know, I've listed off three here, um, just examples. There are many more than just these three, but these I think are, are three that'll kind of give you an idea. And the first is gonna be privilege escalation. And privilege escalation is whenever an attacker has already gained access, and now they're trying to escalate their level of, of uh, or, or, or improve the amount for them, the amount of, of permissions, the amount of rights, uh, what they can access, what they cannot access. Uh, they're trying to gain as much access as possible, and so therefore they, they escalate privileges. And this is, you know, this kind of is targeting uh, privilege management or access control in an organization. Obviously, you don't want to make everybody in your company an admin. So let's say a normal standard user who is not an admin has their account broken into. 
and well, clearly the attacker is going to get in and be like, okay, well, I need all this access, but I do not have those permissions right now. So privilege escalation is where they try to get those permissions for themselves uh, uh, by essentially exploiting processes within the system. And so that is something that can be flagged. Um, and that is something that probably will be flagged. Uh, and that's something that a threat hunter will, will notice and see, okay, well, that's definitely suspicious behavior. Nobody, you know, should be escalating their privileges on their own, you know, and that's kind of why you have like a help desk, right? If, you know, say that standard user does need to be escalated to an admin, uh, well, there would probably be some paperwork to go along with it. Maybe it's a promotion. Maybe it's a, a sensitive project that they might be able to help out with. And, and you know, you'd want to have some kind of paper trail showing, okay, well, this is approved, uh, that, that they can improve their level of access but if it happens just kind of all of a sudden um, without any paper trail then it might be uh, you know something nefarious another thing that they're uh, looking for is connections to suspicious and or dangerous IP addresses so uh, there are lists of IP addresses that you know are floating around uh, that you can get off the internet that lists off IP addresses that are known to be malicious uh, that you know uh, organizations have found that have been blocked uh, and, and you can actually import this list and add it to your own firewall rules uh, to block those lists uh, or block you know the IPs that are found on that list now the important thing is you want to keep that up to date you know you might have an IP list from last year uh, but other organizations may have seen more dangerous IPs and added more IPs to that list now, obviously, if, if you, you know, you've automated the blocking of those IPs, you're probably not going to get a whole lot of leakage where, you know, one of those IPs manages to get through. However, you do want to monitor uh, if any of those do. Obviously, that's something you want to know. Maybe a rule wasn't correctly uh, put in place on a particular firewall. If you have multiple firewalls set up. Um, you know that kind of thing maybe an update reset the rules and so you know you thought that you had it properly configured and you did but whenever you put uh, an up an upgrade or an update through a firewall uh, maybe those rules reset um, you know they may not necessarily be common but there are things that could potentially happen and so um, that is something that a threat hunter would look for as is, is you know you know, these are some IPs that we know are, are bad. You know, we're blocking for them, but it, did any of them get through? And another another thing of that is um, any of those IPs that should be added to that list. Are there any IPs that we've that we've noticed that you know perhaps it's been you know hitting our network? It, it's trying to you know uh, break into an account. It, it you know has too many password attempts on a particular account. Keeps getting blocked, and we know that it is not an employee right it's not coming from uh, any like controlled workstation it's just coming in from the internet that's probably one you're going to want to block um, and then these blocks will later go uh, into this list you can you know continue to contribute uh, to this ongoing list and that will help other companies uh, do their own threat hunting you know uh, a lot of cybersecurity is collaborative you know you're you're really even if you're a staff of one um, you're not alone, <laughs> you know, uh, there's, uh, you know, everybody's trying to help each other out because ultimately your security does affect them. Uh, you know, especially if you are a provider or you are a vendor and you have any kind of exchange of information, you know, they're, they, they are invested in your security as well. So, you know, being sure to plug back in and, and provide help where you can and, and receive that help whenever you need it, that's super important. Now, a third and final thing that threat hunters might be looking for is the installation and execution of files. Um, and, and this can kind of come with uh, the privilege escalation where a standard user may not be allowed to execute certain files. Well, you know, let's say you, you notice privilege escalation and then you notice that a particular executable or .exe um, uh, was run. That's, pro that's definitely gonna be suspicious behavior that you're gonna wanna investigate, right? What is that executable? Did they install that? Um, did they bring this in from the internet? Uh, or was it already there? And if it was already there, how to get there? You know, um, that's these are all things you're gonna wanna pay attention to. Now, this executable could be a virus. Uh, it could be something totally benign. Um, but either way, that's something that you're gonna wanna pay very close attention to. 
Now those are just three things, but there are many other things that threat hunters are looking for. Uh, but we've, you know, we've dissected these three. For more, um, check online. You know, there's, I mean, it's pretty much anything. <laughs> you know, it's pretty much anything that can happen on your network. They're probably looking into it and, and you know, thinking, well, is this something that should be happening on our network? So as you can imagine, there's a lot for them to look for, and this is going to require, I mean, just the collection and the the monitoring of just an incredible amount of information, an incredible amount of, of data uh, from your network. Even if you're a small organization, it's going to be quite a bit, and that is definitely going to be more than just one person can handle in a regular nine to five. And so to make it easier, that is where a SIM comes in or security uh, event and incident management system. Uh, that that allows you to collect this information, to read through it, to, to query it, uh, to create alerts and reports on it, um, and, and that will really help a threat hunter or threat hunting team, uh, even to to be able to find these kinds of suspicious things that are going on and to act on them. Now, another huge help on this issue uh, is the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Uh, and there's a link in the description for this website as well. But the MITRE ATT&CK framework will map uh, tools, techniques, and procedures uh, that uh, that known threat actors are known to use. So whenever we talk about privilege escalation, that is something that will be on there. Whenever we talk about remote code execution, that's going to be something that will be on there. Um, but it, it's basically, it's a graph that will show you and map these out and, and you can find the list of, of known threat actors. And those threat actors, you know, t typically will have their, their tendencies, if you think of like a football game, you know how teams have their tendencies. They have the plays that they're comfortable with and the scheme that they like to run within. Well, it's the exact same with cybersecurity. You have different threat actors that have the tools that they're comfortable with, the scheme that they like to, you know, the workflow that they like to operate with. And, and the MITRE ATT&CK framework, uh, really in a graphically easy to digest way, will map this information for you and so if you notice something going on on your network this can help towards attribution and it can also help in, in just generally understanding you know how threat actors work you know whenever a threat actor gains in information what's logically the next thing that's going to happen and so whenever you're investigating and maybe if you're new this can be a great thing to look uh, for or look after um, and, and reference from and kind of get an idea of, okay, I, I just saw this alert that, 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 you know, someone gained access to an account, uh, like a suspicious IP managed to gain access to this particular user account. What's the next thing that they're gonna try to do? Oh, okay, it's probably gonna be privilege escalation. Well, okay, what, you know, what privilege are they trying to get to? Probably root, right? So, you're, you know, you're gonna wanna try to, um, you're gonna wanna, you know, check this out and really digest the information. Another really cool thing is that the MITRE ATT&CK framework can map to a seam, to, to some particular seams. So, it, it, you know, if, if you're looking for getting one for your organization, that might influence kind of, uh, you know, your decision there. If, if you're trying to get one just for threat hunting, that would be a good option to get a sim that really can, you know, work with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, which most probably will, but, you know, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, mind you that if you're, if you're, in charge of an organization and you're and you're trying to get some threat hunting started uh, this will be a good option uh, but you know the more capabilities that you want access to the the more expensive it might get so there's definitely a cost benefit analysis there uh, to really think about we you know what's your objective what are you looking for what do you, what capabilities um, do you need to import and what can you create yourself? Uh, that's going to be, you know, an important journey for you to be able to embark on. So with all that, uh, quick question, do you want to be a threat hunter? Comment down below. Uh, if, if you're watching this video and you are a threat hunter and you have advice uh, for anybody that's watching that uh, might be new to this or, or any just wisdom you want to impart, also comment down below. Uh, I'd love to you know foster this collaborative community where people can grow and learn together. So with that, uh, like, comment down below, and subscribe for more content. Thank you.